can see it's a really great color match for the asphalt that's not painted. Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, today I am going to fill in some cracks I have on my tennis court. It's asphalt, so same thing as the asphalt driveway. And uh, I'm gonna use this pave patch stuff. It's epoxy based stuff and you mix it with sand. And now they give you black sand um, with it as well for the asphalt or you can use, you know, more uh, standard beige sand for the, um, the concrete. So I have a couple really big cracks here along the main one. You can see, I mean, this is a solid, you know, two to three inches uh, wide and it goes all the way down. I've been trying to keep it as clean as I can over time. You can see we put this rubberized stuff down. That was a complete waste of time. But um, then it also grows and spreads around here where, you know, somewhat filled in. So I'm gonna have to open this up. Um, and, you know, this is all soft stuff here. So I'm gonna have to dig that out and give me a clean, uh, surface to work with but then I'm gonna go and I'm going to try to um, fill this stuff in so some of this you can see you know this is you know three plus inches deep of a crack so I might fill some of that in with regular place sand just to bring the surface up a little bit higher so that I don't have as much epoxy that I have to pour down in there now the instructions say you know obviously have it as clean as you can because it's only as good as what it uh, bonds to. So if it bonds to this loose sand, obviously it won't stick to anything. You want it to really bond to the side of the concrete there. That's how you're gonna get your best results. So all these bigger cracks, I'm gonna use this um, paved patch epoxy stuff. And then the really small ones, the more hairline cracks, let's see if we can find some over here. Um, those I'm gonna use a more typical caulk gun, um, you know, the 10 ounce tubes and use that to fill those in. But really I want something to handle these big cracks. So that's my, that's my big problem. So first thing, first thing here is I have to get this cleaned up. So I'm going to leaf blow it off and then I'm gonna clean out the crack. We'll put this stuff in and we'll see uh, how it goes. All right, so this crack down here is deep and you can see how deep this thing goes. It's a good four or five inches down to the, to the soil down below. So that, that asphalt is all the way cracked. But then here I have some of this um, rubberized, you know, sealant that didn't do uh, anything helpful for me. And this is all, um, you know, needs to be broken up and ripped off so I can actually get the epoxy down into that crack so it has something to adhere to. So now I'm going through and just poking this and ripping up all this rubber that just makes a mess. So definitely wouldn't recommend this stuff here at all. This doesn't really do you a lot. That's why I went with the... Uh, with the epoxy based stuff because I want something to pour in there and really fill in that crack and they say this stuff is actually stronger than the asphalt or the concrete so hopefully it will do a lot better than what this rubberized stuff did. This did not work. All right, so I got most of the big cracks opened up. Uh, I got the rubberized coating that had kind of dingled down in there. Got them out, got most of the plants out of there. And now I've started to take out leaves and sticks and that kind of stuff where there's just soil or sand. You know, underneath this asphalt is, is sand. So uh, either way, I'm gonna have sand on the base of it. And so what I wanna do is fill it up, uh, the crack a little bit. So I probably have somewhere between one and two inches deep of the epoxy. I don't want to go less than one inch because then I'm going to have, you know, a weak epoxy surface. And I don't want to go too deep because I'm going to use up too much of this epoxy. And it's not cheap. So um, I'm going to try to get a balance there. You know, you can go um, really deep with this epoxy. You know, you can actually like fill um, a low area uh, completely of like concrete or asphalt. But I'm going to use it obviously just to seal up this, this crack. So now that um, I have these piles of rubber uh, chunks out, I'm going to clean those up and then I'm going to um, put the sand in there and then I'm going to get ready to start mixing up the epoxy. Now, I had quotes to get this whole tennis court resurfaced and they would fill in this crack actually with their own epoxy stuff and they would um, recolor it um, on top. All that kind of stuff, it was like $15,000 and they could get to it in about a year. So uh, certainly not something I wanted to pay for or wait for. I'm gonna try to get this covered up here before winter hits so I 
try to limit the amount of damage that happens and just preserve this court uh, for several more years until maybe it does need a full resurface. These edges here of the existing asphalt is right where I want to connect to with the epoxy so it gets a good bond to that. So trying to keep the sand off the wall as best as I can so that it has more place to grab hold. This is a 15 gallon kit. I'm not going to do the whole thing because I don't know what I'm doing just yet as far as um, how far it will go, how much space I need, how much time I need to work it. You have to use it up in about an hour or less and um you know so my goal is to do it in batches here and uh, i'm just gonna pour it in you know it's uh, basically two to one ratio between the two uh, parts a and part b and so i'm going to use uh, these two buckets to measure them and then pour them into this big um, bucket here that it comes with they give you gloves to use which is obviously a good idea to use they give you a mixer a paint mixer that you'll put on a, a drill Here's the part B mix, and then here's the part A mix. So this 15 gallon uh, mix is it is two gallons of A and one gallon of B, and that gives you three gallons of epoxy, but then they give you four bags or 200 pounds of sand that you will then mix. And so the difference between the asphalt one and the concrete one is just with the asphalt one, you also get some black sand instead of the, um, the beige or gray sand. So then you get a couple uh, paint sticks here for stirring, and you get the mixing instructions, which um, have some pictures and it is color, but um, you know, honestly, it's not fully comprehensive, and uh, that's where this video should help you out to figure out uh, how to do it. I'll let you know. I blew it all off so that as much sand and debris is off of the, the top and the sides like I just said. And this is the bucket that I get. It looks like it maybe like a six gallon bucket size. So I know I can't fit all of these in there at once, nor do I want to because I have to uh, you know, have about an hour to, to work it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quarter of it at a time. So that means I'll use, uh, I have a, a mix. I have. Uh, two bags of the black sand and two bags of kind of the beige sand. So I'm going to put half of each of those in here and I'm going to do a quarter of um, the the mix. So I'm going to use a quarter gallon or sorry a half gallon of this and a quarter gallon of that into here and then mix it up. So I'll go ahead and start with that and then uh, we'll put the sand in there and we'll start to put it out and see how it goes and then I might make a bigger batch uh, afterwards but really I my constraint is this bucket here I have to make sure I can fit all the material in this bucket and then I'll use either a spatula or a trowel to um, to spread it into the uh, the crack there all right so that's 64 ounces of this and I'm going to do 32 ounces of the part B. Okay, so I'm gonna pour those into here. You can see the part A stuff is uh, pretty thick, so you you know might want to scrape some of it up if you do what I do, where I'm kind of mixing the. Um, two together. So now this is included with the kit. It's a mixer stick. You do want to use a power drill because you're supposed to do this for three minutes. Okay, once you mix that up for a while, then you can start to mix in your sand. So again, for me, since I'm doing a quarter of it, I'm going to use a half bag of each.
All right. So I think that's uh, pretty good. It's, um, you know, you can tell it's all wet and consistent. So now I'm gonna just start putting it in the crack. So the stuff is basically the consistency of wet sand. And you can see if you just lay it down, it will kind of fall in a little bit, but you just guide it in there and then you make it a little bit high and then I press down on it to, um, to get a little bit of compression in there so that it fills in all the side voids. But this stuff's pretty easy to go in there. It's pretty quick to do it. Um, you know, you just put a little bit too much, squish it down and then you can come over it and scrape it off and, and slide it down just kind of like you would any kind of mortar or any other consistency like that. So pretty quick and easy to do. Right, so this part's really cool because this is a crack. I have not put sand down in there, but it's three or four inches deep. But what's really cool about this stuff is I can put it in here and it will slide down in there. Some of it will, will fall and be wasted. But if you keep going, it actually just stacks up on the side and it starts to grab hold. And as you press in, more and more of the epoxy sand grabs hold of the wall on the inside. And it actually will allow you to force it down in there and I found you know, my hands are much better at this than the trowel for the small stuff and I can actually get it to stack up you know an inch or more deep along this wall by just forcing it in like this and then I end up with a filled epoxy hole that I don't have to use a little uh, you know rubber crack sealer so you know this is maybe a quarter inch wide that's about um, the right depth I mean sorry the width to do this in it's uh, wide enough you can get lots of sand in there, but not so wide that it all just falls to the bottom. So I thought that was a, uh, a neat trick here. All right, so it just took a couple hours and uh, I was able to complete. Now I only ended up using half of the total 15 gallon. Things so only use seven and a half gallons um, of the the mix. Now that means I used you know one gallon of the A and a half gallon of the B. I'll save it. You know I don't actually have another use for it, but it was still cheaper to do that than it was to buy the smaller quantity ones. 
and now I have two bags of sand left over as well. So I was able to do the whole thing, which I was kind of surprised. And if you look at that mix, there's a great blend here with uh, the natural asphalt. Now, obviously, this stuff is mostly uh, colored, so it, it's a little bit less, um, you know, blending in. But you can see here the uh, that mix of um, half black and half beige does a really good job of blending with the um, the asphalt. So now I was able to do a lot of it. Some of the stuff we got a little bit too small. I went ahead and skipped it. It's too hard to get inside of there in those little tiny cracks. For that one, I'm going to use the kind of a more regular caulk type crack. But the rest of the stuff, it's actually really impressive. I actually started using my hand for a lot of this stuff. I found it easier just to have my gloves on and smush it in with my hands and pat it flat. So I was able to get all the way from there to the other side at 60 feet. I was able to get a smaller crack that went all the way there, all the way up to the end actually of the court there. That's probably another 60 feet. That was a much smaller crack. This stuff is like two to three inches wide here. And then I had this about one, one and a half inch wide one going all the way down through here. So that's about another um, 50 feet or something. And then a smaller crack going all the way to that end and to that end. So, I mean, a couple hundred feet of cracks and some of them are two to three inches wide. So um, plenty of material there to get that done. So now I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll come back and check on it and see what it looks like when it's all dried and finished. Okay, so here we are several hours later. It's been about five hours. I think they say about four hours is what they call it as cured or you know, at least hard and walkable. And uh, that's certainly how it is right now. Uh, it feels very hard if I look at it and compare it to the uh, the color of kind of regular asphalt. It is very close. In fact, the, the most egregious uh, stand out here is the old black rubber tar on either side of it. Otherwise, it is a very close match. And then if I do this you can see it is very hard it certainly uh, feels solid to the ground um, and compared to the asphalt there and uh, now we'll just see how it holds up you know obviously um, this has just been a few hours but I have pretty good faith in their product I've had their product before in my barn and it held up well so I'm expecting this to hold up well as well so you can see here this is what it looks like when it's all said and done now you know I have some leftover remnants here that they do stick to the um, to the ground but you can either use your foot and kind of do this and that will clean off the remnants so that they are they come off b beside them so I kind of plan on doing that to get the little eyeball people off and then I will just blow them away but if you rub across this one it does not come off it is very very st um, stuck in place so be sure to check back in you know if you're watching this video and let's say it's the year 2027 or something and you're wondering how it held up just put a comment down below and ask me and i will uh be sure to uh follow up but if i have any big issues with it i'll make a new video and show you guys what uh what problems happen and if not then uh it's good to go so thanks for watching